Hello and good morning, dear students. Uh, how are you this week? Uh, so congratulations for the groups who had uh, finished and submitted their uh, historical uh, topics or their multimedia topic facilitation. Uh, if you had submitted already your um, <clears throat> videos through Google Drive or if you're going to submit it through USB, then congratulations. Uh, please also uh, provide soft copy and printed copies of your pamphlets no? so that this will be the reviewers of your classmates for your assessment and for the upcoming midterm examination. So this morning, no, I had also once again made the liberty to have this uh, class recording no, for our topic uh, because this topic is somewhat uh, quite uh, complex or difficult to discuss inside the classroom, you know, given the limitations and given the factors that we are experiencing in our classroom. You know, that's why it's so difficult to discuss this topic. And therefore, I had made the liberty to just record it for your convenience, you know, for everybody's convenience. <clears throat> so this morning, uh, the topic at hand so for this morning our topic at hand is what uh, lesson three we're still in unit one no? but lesson three which is historical sources so previously no we uh, the past lesson no we have discussed uh, what is history and what are the dimensions you know, in the study of history. We had talked about the different philosophies you know, being observed in history. And last week, we have discussed about the historian. You know, who, is, who is a historian? And what are the uh, methods? What are the practices? That, or what are the roles? and responsibilities that a historian performs in terms of providing historical knowledge. No? So uh, in your assignment also, you had already researched some of the more prominent uh, historians in the country, and you had also examined their background, they have examined their interests, their biases, or their subjectivities, and how their subjectivities and biases uh, shaped you know, in how they interpret and they analyze historical events that had happened in the past. So in lesson three, you know, we will focus more on historical sources. You know? So historical sources, you know, these are the most important uh, tools. You know? uh, historical sources are the most important uh, ingredients and elements you know, for the historian. You know, these are the matters or the things which they tend to study more you know, so that they can uh, derive historical knowledge or historical information. So after studying uh, the role of the historian, it's also important to uh, have a more profound understanding of what are historical sources and how these historical sources can be a crucial factor you know, in terms of developing and concluding historical knowledge. You know? So what are historical sources? You know? So accordingly to our textbook, uh, historical sources are the historian's most essential research tools. You know? these are, because these are the same elements which historians are examining, interpreting, and are deriving, concluding historical facts and knowledge. So when we say historical sources, these are the repre uh, representations. These are the evidences no, of past events. No? Uh, unfortunately, no, unlike uh, Marvel, no, or uh, or unlike in the movies, no, we don't have the technology yet, no, to or Doctor Strange, no, wherein we can 
uh, time travel, you know, go back to a historical, a uh, certain historical period, no, and witness firsthand, you know, that uh, the events that had, un- uh, the events that had uh, unfolded, you know, we don't have that capability yet as of this time, and therefore, the only thing that historians, the only thing that we can uh, rely on to uh, bring back or to narrate the events that had happened in the past is through the historical sources no? or the representations or the evidences of these past events. So commonly, no? commonly these historical sources are scarce and incomplete. No? Talagang uh, bihira, madalang, no, itong mga evidences from the past, no, because most of these uh, materials are, uh, what, how, how, so, how should I say this? Parang soluble or uh, through time ay erode, no, nasisira, uh, nasusunog, no? eventually they decompose. No, so yung mga surviving na mga evidences about this past events no are kokonti na lang ang nakaka-survive no as of this time. And therefore, it's really difficult. No, it's really difficult to puzzle the complete story of a particular event in the past because the evidences or the representations that are still survive that had that had survived until this time ay kokonti na lamang. No? And therefore, historians uh, have this challenge. No? Historians have this difficulty of recreating the past, telling the story of the past, no? wherein uh, only a few fragments no, remain. No? So for example, uh, you're trying to tell the story of Ibong Adarna nagkakwento ka ng tungkol sa Ibong Adarna pero yung libro mo ay uh, nasunog yung chapter 1 no na mura yung chapter 2 may chap meron chapter 3 yung chapter 4 chap, chapter 4 mo nabuhusan ng tubig no for example chapter 5 may natira chapter 6 kalahati so uh, it's difficult to tell that story ng Ibong Adarna kung yung mga may mga chapters or may mga parts na missing or may sira. So ganon din yung uh, ganon din yung uh, situation with our historians, no? The representations or the historical sources are limited. No? Bibihira ka lang talaga na makakakuha ng mga historical na buo yung mga evidences, no? But even though, no, even though na hindi kompleto na, na <coughs> incomplete yung full uh, historical sources ng mga events na ito in our past. Uh, meron tayong mga sinusunod ng mga historical methods, meron tayong sinusunod ng mga uh, historical procedure no kung saan ito yung nagko-compensate no. Ito yung <clears throat> ito yung tumutulong sa mga historians to bridge the gap no pa na mag matulungan sila na ma-interpret yung kwento kahit na may mga missing pages kahit na may mga missing e- evidences no that's why na like what i've said uh, history is not it's not just a long narrative no it is a scientific inquiry and kahit na may mga limitations no may mga kulang na pahina ng kasaysayan may mga ginagawa yung mga historians no may mga uh, validation silang ginagawa to overcome this limitations kina compare nila ito sa ibang sources no marami silang mga techniques na ginagawa no to to overcome yung mga limitations of evidence no so that's that's how important historical sources is no na uh, kahit konti yan no but if you can guarantee na they are authentic no, that they are genuine then therefore they can still be a legitimate source of historical fact or historical knowledge so uh, when we talk of historical sources no there are two 
uh, images classifications. No? Pag sinabi natin historical sources, there is what you call the primary and then we have the secondary sources. So paano ba natin, uh, how do we differentiate primary from secondary sources? No, So we differentiate the main uh, classification depends on the historical subject being studied. No? Ano ba yung topic na gusto mong pag-usapan? Is it the war period in the Philippines? Are we talking about the martial law? No? Are we talking about uh, pre-colonial Philippines? So depende kung ano yung subject na pinag-aralan natin and all the sources and all the materials na directly connected no? directly connected or di directly uh, associated to these events no to these events no ay masasabi nating primary sources no so ang classification ng primary at secondary sources hindi lang yan based on age no so pag sinabi natin na ang isang uh, bagay ay uh, thousands of years old or decades years na itong source na ito hindi ibig sabihin ay automatic primary source na siya no so for example ang pinag-uusapan nating topic ay pre-colonial no ibig sabihin uh, the philippines uh, before the time of the Spanish uh, colonization. No? So that's thousands of years. No? And then meron kang isang particular na evidence na although halimbawa uh, sobrang tagal din niya, but it was found out that it was uh, made or produced during the colonial period. Kahit na masasabi natin na pareho silang uh, sinauna no or uh, matatabi nating historical na sila pareho no because they are produced years ago pero hindi din masasabi na primary source because yung ating topic of contention o yung topic of focus natin is pre-colonial no so uh, it it's not about the age of the source and it's not also about the perceived importance no na ang importance ng isang particular na uh, evidence ay nagbabago kasi yan eh, no depending on the reader depending on the researcher no but the main classification talaga ng primary source is that these evidences are linked directly first hand doon sa evidence at hand okay so we will discuss in detail no how how are we going to further uh, differentiate primary and secondary sources? So when we say primary sources, now these are the evidences. These are uh, material uh, material representations that are produced, that are created simultaneously as the event period or subject being studied. Ibig sabihin yung particular na evidence na yan ay kasing edad. Kasing edad noong event o yung period na yon na nangyari yung event na yun. So for example, uh, yung execution ni Jose Rizal. No? The, death, the death of Jose Rizal sa Bagumbayan. No, so ano ba yung mga pwedeng makonsider na primary sources no sa event ng death ni Jose Rizal? So pwedeng gamitin yung minutes of the event no halimbawa kung merong uh, fraile kung merong ang government official who had described that particular event no describe niya kung uh, anong oras dinala si Rizal doon sa Bagumbayan sino-sino yung mga uh, judge or lawyer or sino yung mga guardia civil na present doon kung meron man silang somewhat attendance during that time no that can be uh, considered as a primary source no? if it was written at that particular moment no or by someone who is present at that time government reports no government reports of that incident 
No? For instance, if that particular event was recorded and then it was written to the King of Spain or kung sino man yung authority sa Spain na certain Jose Rizal was uh, executed no? for charges of treason or whatever. So yung particular na letter na yon or government report na yon which was written during that period can be considered as a primary source. Uh, photographs, no? kung meron mang uh, photograph, uh, definitely black and white, which had survived during that time, no? is a primary source. Uh, newspaper clippings or newspaper articles na, na isulat no? during that time, probably in Spanish language or if English or Filipino, kung meron. No? So, newspaper clippings no uh, made during that time no this is similar don sa activity no no i have asked you the don sa facebook page ng roakanan no di ba uh, may mga newspaper clippings doon may mga pictures doon na uh, which was taken or published during that particular event or the period of during those particular events so those are primary sources artifacts no halimbawa yung Ano yung damit na sinuot ni Jose Rizal? Yung damit na may butas ng bala? Yung kanyang sombrerong isinuot? Yung taling, yung tali na tinali sa kanya? For example, uh, yung gasera no, na nilagyan niya ng kanyang tula sa Port Santiago. Memorabilia, artifacts. These are primary sources. Uh, eyewitness accounts. no Yung mga kapatid ni Rizal. Uh, yung pare na nag na pakumpisal kay Rizal o kung pare na present during the execution so kung may mga interview man sa mga tao na yun or kung may sinulat sila may sinulat sila sa kanilang memoir or nagsulat sila sa uh, letters no for example yung isang kapatid ni Rizal no if he or she was present during there so nagsulat siya then nagsulat siya sa kanilang mga ibang kapatid about how Rizal was executed, what happened after after his death. So those are primary sources, no? Because those were written accounts made by the eyewitnesses themselves. Okay, so all of these things, no? Ito yung mga can be considered as primary sources. Next, we go to secondary sources. No, pag secondary naman, no, from the word itself, secondary. These are already produced by an author, uh, by an author who had studied primary sources. No? So, uh, for example, dun talking about uh, the death of Jose Rizal, no, a certain historian, uh, let's say si Chodo, Chodoro Agoncillo, example lang. No? So, pinag-aaralan niya yung mga letters ng uh, kapatid ni Rizal. No? Mga letters ng mga kapatid ni Rizal about their reaction, about their <clears throat> feelings and sentiments about how their brother was killed. No? Letters of Aguinaldo, letters of Bonifacio, no? of how that particular event sparked the Katipunan Revolution. So uh, by studying these primary sources, no historians such as Chedoro Agoncillo, for example, they had published no, their own findings. They published their own conclusions. They had published their own interpretations by studying the primary sources that I have mentioned earlier. No, and therefore, once na nagpublish sila ng kanilang in, ng kanilang interpretation no ng kanilang uh, historical understanding ng mga primary sources na iyon then that's the time that we are going to consider them as secondary sources so commonly no the books that we use textbooks the references that we use no in 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 the classroom no or in the academy these are commonly secondary or tertiary sources already no that's why na yung mga textbook na textbooks natin napakaraming mga references yan 
no at the at the back part you know it only shows that these are already secondary or uh, tertiary sources uh, if the author is not an actual witness no ito yung isang magandang uh, hint no whether it's a primary or secondary source if the author is not an actual witness or is not an actual witness of the event or is not from the period no hindi siya nabuhay during the time ng event na yon no then definitely it's not a primary sources it's not a primary uh, primary historical source okay so ano ba yung mga benefits no it's um, it's important that there is benefits in studying historical sources no otherwise if there's no benefit then bakit pa natin dapat pag-aralan no so the number one uh, important benefit is that to have a grasp or a full understanding of historical context and significance uh, uh, lahat tayo no hindi naman tayo na hindi naman ta hindi naman talaga tayo sobrang napakadalubhasa sa kasaysayan no marami tayong hindi alam no sa mga kaganapan so it's important really to uh, study both primary and secondary sources no para mas magkaroon tayo ng mas malalim na kamalayan mas malalim na pangunawa sa mga kaganapan sa ating kasaysayan no makita makita natin kung ano na ba yung mga na solve ano na ba yung mga na prove na mga historical facts sa ating kasaysayan versus ano pa ba yung mga uh, events na napakarami pang question mark. Uh, ano pa ba yung mga events sa ating kasaysayan na contentious o ibig sabihin marami pang debate. And therefore, kung ang isang event or isang period sa ating kasaysayan ay napakarami pang debate, it means that there is a greater need for more historical inquiry. Dapat pa nating lalong pag-aralan yung aspeto ng kasaysayan para malaman natin kung ano ba yung totoo at kung ano ba yung tama. No? Siyempre kung iisang tao lang yung mag-aaral yan, then uh, we will be limited only to his or her perspective. No? So therefore, it's also nice na lahat tayo magbabasa tayo. Magbabasa tayo ng hindi ilang isa, hindi ilang dalawa, hindi as much as possible, marami pang mga sources, historical sources, para mas magkaroon tayo ng mas malalim na pag-intindi. Hindi lang ba one perspective, no? kundi uh, multiple or full perspective no? para we can decide for our own. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is, as much as possible, it's really important that we can have access to primary sources like what i've said yung secondary at tertiary tertiary sources may mga ano na yan may mga biases no may mga biases na yan may mga subjectivities na yan ng mga historians so it will be advantageous for us no kung makikita talaga natin yung primary sources para tayo mismo tayo mismo ah uh, mm, ma-practice natin yung ating critical thinking at makapag-analyze tayo, makapag-interpret tayo independently on our own. No? So napakahalaga yan, no? yung skill ng uh, going to the source. Kasi parang chismis din yan. Eh, no? Parang chismis din yan na kapag makikinig ka sa pangatlong tao, sa pang-apat na tao, eh, napakarami na yung dagdag bawas. So, kung gusto mo talaga yung katotohanan, kung gusto mo talaga yung pure truth, then you go directly dun sa tao na yon. You go directly to the person na nagsabi. Ano ba yung talagang sinabi niya? Ano ba yung konteksto ng sinabi niya? Ano ba yung gusto niyang uh, ipahiwating? O ano ba yung meaning na gusto niyang sabihin? You have to get it straight from the horse's mouth sabi nga nila no so uh, when we are faced with issues such as this chismis or mga paninira you ha we have to be careful no kasi kung na nakuha lang yan natin sa pangalawa or sa pangatlo 
or nabasa lang natin yan somewhere, then baka may mga ano na yan, may mga dagdag bawas. So, to be safe, you have to go straight to the primary source and find out for your own, interpret for your own. Never judge uh, harshly. No? Never judge right away. You always examine the other part or the other side of the story. Uh, that's why na I always challenge you na dapat hindi kayo makontento. Hindi kayo makontento sa kung ano yung automatic na sasabihin ng isang tao. No? You have to validate. No? Kailangan yung i-double check through other uh, documents, no? other evidences, or you have to validate it to other persons na nakakilala sa kanya. No? That's how you work as a historian. That's how you work as a critical thinker. Okay, so those are the benefits of studying historical sources. So, paano ba natin i uh, evaluate? No, kasi hindi we have we have to ano we have to take note no na uh, hindi lahat ng primary sources ay credible. No, hindi lahat ng uh, representations of the past can be considered as valid. No. So just because na this particular uh, source is from that period, it doesn't mean that it's 100% truthful no, or authentic. So there is a system that historians follow in order to determine whether a particular evidence is credible or reliable source of historical knowledge. No? So it's important that we scrut scrutinize evidence. No? Uh, scrutinize evidence, otherwise you are going to be deceived. You are going to be misled. No? Maluloko ka if you're not going to genuinely examine the evidence presented to you. So, kasi yung mga evidence natin through time, no? they are subject to deterioration no? especially kung sila ay uh, nasa ano ba tawag diyan uh, yung mga nabubulok no like paper like wood no mga mga materials that uh, erode or decompose so sometimes may mga factor yan na may mga parts of the pages ang nawawala no or yung ink ay nabubura through time no i don't know if you have uh, observed it no nga bisan nga ni ro kat mga makarangara nga resibo di ba nga gina buo naton sa 711 or sa ATM no magbuhay hay ga fade nakaduga ro ana nga markings di ni mo makita magbuhay so same also with our historical uh, evidences no kung gabuhay hay deteriorate uh, unfortunately, some of the primary sources kara hai gin forge, no gin peke. Gin peke emao because may andang a gusto nga i, uh, may andang agenda, no, may andang a maga in ya motive hamanit nag forge sanda it mga evidence kana. So it's important that as historians, may aton ya procedure para masaira naton kung daya nga nga mga sources hai valid ag reliable. So there are two types of criticisms that we employ, and this is also applicable uh, also in our uh, present applications. No? We have the external and the internal criticism. So what is external criticism? So uh, through external criticism, no, uh, evidence is verified for its authenticity by the following. Number one is examine natin yung uh, physical characteristics. No? Ano ba yung itsura ng itsura? Itsura. Itsura ng evidence na yan. Can we consider that evidence as old? Can we say it's antique? Kasi kung mapapansin natin na yung mga sunog-sunog o yung mga, yung mga dumi-dumi is very recent, no? hindi siya natural na process of erosion, then we can say na probably this is forged. Probably this is uh, pineke. No, napakaraming ganyan. No? Napakaraming fake na antique. Napakaraming mga fake na mga painting, mga forge or cup 
uh, mga uh, copycat ng mga uh, antique. No? So, you have to examine carefully the physical characteristics, consistency no? with the historical character of the time it was produced. No? So, for example, kung ang pinag-uusapan natin ay <coughs> uh, bagay ng pre-colonial ay mga nakasulat doon ng mga letra no the historians will analyze no if these letters are somewhat similar also the the letters or the symbols are somewhat similar also to the other letters found in documents that are of the same age no as the document in question so titingnan natin no kung pa-compare natin yan sa ibang document kung pareho ba yung kanilang uh, itsura or yung papel na ginamit o yung technology na ginamit nila sa pag-print. No? Is it accurate or yung kanilang manner of writing? No? Gamit nila yung uh, <coughs> uh, feather and ink. No? So, Uh, historians will uh, use that comparison, no? And then uh, source of materials, no? Ano ba yung ginamit, no? Uh, paper ba? Uh, animal skin? Ano ba yung ink na ginamit, no? So these are external criticism, no? So as earlier mentioned, the quality of paper, kung gaano siya kakapal, gaano siya kanipis. Uh, may mga standards din kasi yung sinusunod yan no? at that time may mga quality of paper or uh, material of paper no? being used at that time so kung consistent yan doon sa time uh, na in question na sinasabing nanggaling yung evidence na yan through comparison of the quality of paper then masasabi natin that uh, source is legitimate ano pa ba copying or printing technique no uh, language or words used if appropriate during that period syempre nung time ng Kastila no? wala pang mga slang no wala pang mga uh, modern english na mga words no so they're going to uh, examine no for consistency yung lalim ng tagalog no yung lalim ng Kastila the mix or oh, the common words that were spoken during that time or the common words utilized in other texts during that time they're going to compare that and see kung magma-match sila sa language and words that are used during that time oh, that's how they're going to do it they're going to compare it to the other uh, available works of the same time or of the same period They're also going to examine the author, siempre, no, the publisher and the date of publication. Uh, aside from that, no, historians also uh, employ the help of other experts, no, to ensure, no, the authenticity of artifacts or documents presented as historical evidence, no, from archaeologists specifically. Kung ito ba ay mga human remains, ito ba ay mga uh, human uh, artifacts, no? mga vase, working tools, kitchen tools or anything. So archaeologists will help, will help date no? ano yung uh, carbon dating. No? Ma-determine nila yung estimated age ng mga events, ng mga, ano na yan, ng mga kagamitan or ng mga remains na yan. They also seek help from linguists, no, sa mga linguists, no, to analyze and scrutinize text documents, identify nila kung may mga inten uh, intentional or unintentional na mga errors dun sa document na yon, kung may mga gin uh, vandal doon na hindi siya kasama doon sa ano na yon, sa original document, no, if there is omissions, falsifications, modifications the linguist will know no, kung yung document na yan ay forged or not. Okay, so that's how we 
establish our external criticism for our historical sources, no? specifically yung primary sources natin. How about internal criticism? No? So when we do internal criticism, we examine the information. So kanina, in-examine natin yung ano niya, physical characteristics, no? yung papel, yung ink, yung pagkakasulat. Yung ano naman, sa internal criticism naman is what we are discussing here is ano yung message. No? Ano yung message ng document na yan or source. No? What is the information presented. So, paano ba ginagawa ang internal criticism? This is done by reading the material meticulously and paulit-ulit. No? Reading and rereading it, trying to understand what is the meaning what is the meaning of this source? Ano ba yung uh, gusto niyang ipahiwatig? What is the message that is encapsulated in this uh, particular historical source or document? So, importante din no, na aside sa maintindihan mo kung ano yung gusto niyang sabihin doon sa specific na document na yun. It's important din alam mo yung background alam mo yung background ng period na yon. Halimbawa, uh, you're going to examine a particular letter of Jose Rizal to Andres Bonifacio. So, aside sa alam mo kung ano yung nilalaman o ano yung, ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga sinulat ni Jose Rizal kay Andres Bonifacio doon sa sulat na yon, it's important din na malaman mo kung ano ba yung mga nangyayari at that time. Ano ba yung sitwasyon nila? Ano ba yung konteksto? What is the background during that time na sinulat yung letter na yun? No? Like for example, was it done during war time? Was it done during peace time? So ano ba yung mga konteksto? Ano ba yung mga background na nakaka-influence or that will give further meaning to those letters? So ikaw din na historian, dapat alam mo yung mga kaganapan na nangyayari at that time. Ano ba yung mga trends? Ano ba yung mga major events na nangyari at that specific period para mas makontekstualize mo. No? Mas mabigyan mo ng mas malalim na pangunawa, mas malalim na pagintindi. Ano ba yung importansya noong sulat na yon in that particular uh, time span no? or time period? No? So, yun ang tinatawag natin na internal uh, criticism. Now, we analyze the content of the document or the source. At the same time, analyze it against or in the background of the overall events during that period. No, so, here are the steps no, commonly uh, followed by historians. No? We examine the author and its background. No, the context, the content no, of that document, was it done during the revolution? Was it done during the uh, time na uh, uh, the revolts or during the time of uh, integration to the Catholicism? No? Those, what's the context? No? Agenda behind the production. Ano ba yung motive? Bakit uh, pinalaganap yung sulat na yan? Or what is yung libro na yan? Or that particular uh, document? And what is the knowledge and its intended purpose? Ano ba yung, ano yung naserve niya na purpose? No? Kung meron man. No? So, these are some of the guiding questions. These are the guiding steps that historians follow. No, para ma-internally criticize nila ang isang particular na document. Okay, so validating historical sources is really important. No? It's important that we do external and internal criticism no? so because there's a danger. No? There's a danger of using unverified, falsified, and untruthful sources and evidence. No? Kasi kung uh, fake ang iyong source, fake ang iyong material, then most likely yung conclusions mo or yung knowledge na mapoproduce mo ay most likely fake din. 
no? or uh, untruthful or half truths no? hindi siya yung buong kwento no so it's it's dangerous no because uh, future historians future uh, students will cite a false uh, knowledge just because the sources it was re- it was retrieved or derived was false in the first place no and like what i've said you know if we're not going to be careful if we're not going to implement external and internal criticisms of our historical sources then we're going to pr- propagate historical deceptions and lies uh, in our case study the case studies in our textbook no they were able to present two uh, significant case studies or two significant uh, historical fact no that was uh, somewhat disproven no using external and internal uh, criticism no and these are the code of kalanchau and the other is the ferdinand marcos war medals no so you are free to read no in our textbook no chapter uh, lesson 3 no? i think it is on page 18 uh, page 18 until page 21 no page 18 to page 21 on our book no read for yourself and see and find out how did they use external and internal criticism in order to uh, prove that these two case uh, case examples uh, is not uh, completely factual or is not based on factual evidence, historical evidence. So read it so that kayo mismo makaalam and decide for your own. No, I, uh, I am not going to put my own interpretation no? i'm not going to <coughs> tell to you how i perceive these evidences but uh, i challenge you on your own to read no? and you can also research for on your own and see for yourself no? especially sa mga tagabatan no? syempre hay and madawang gud ka na nang pagpati no sa code of kalanchao so see for yourself no? it's also nice to practice uh, being a historian and see what's the available uh evidence you know, about this uh, references in our history okay so the reference as always is the course module for readings in philippine history you know, the textbook i had mentioned to you so for our take-home readings you now this is the final lesson for unit one the philippine historiography so i do hope that you can read it in advance and for the next uh Two to three weeks, no, we will be fast forwarding to Unit 5 doing history. We are going to go in passing as how to conduct rest- historical research, life history, and the biograph- biographical research. But for the meantime, no, so congratulations, you will have no major activity this morning. So what I'm just going to do is for you to, for those who have not yet submitted their group output please submit your videos in the google drive soft copy and the soft copy of your pamphlets if not again submit through usb the hard copy the hard copy of your pamphlets please provide for your classmates uh, watch and read you no know, uh, on your free time also kindly watch and read the videos and pamphlets of your classmates i will make an effort that these videos will be available already either through Google Drive or through YouTube so that you can watch them. And hopefully by next week, we can already prepare for the assessment quiz for the first uh, group facilitator. So thank you everyone. Um, I hopefully no, I hopefully that through this modality, I was able to explain more systematically and more concretely the uh, concepts you know, that are uh, ingrained or included in our lesson. No? Uh, I hope that this modality serves you well in terms of better explaining to you, you know, and better uh, giving justice you know, in terms of you having a better comprehension of these historical concepts. 
So thank you, everyone. If you if you have questions, no, please ask me in the GC or if ever that we will have a time for the face-to-face -face lecture, you may do so and we can always go back to these chapters. So thank you, CRPH students. This is Sir Kim signing off.